Susan, I have a question about your, what seems to be a repudiation of abstraction in My Emily Dickinson. Um, I'll quote the line, but you know it, of course, because you read it often. Um, when I love a thing, I want, I want it and try to get it. Abstraction of the particular from the universal is the entrance into evil. God, I don't know what That's I a pretty think. strong statement I about... Know. Now, uh, um, the enemy, the, the problem <laughs> there is either, um, <coughs> let's say, could be an argument against ideology, it could be an argument against theory, um, it what could be... It again? Uh, well, the two lines are, and this is paratactic, <laughs> so you don't have to put the two together, um, when I love a thing, I want it and try to get at it. That's get good, it. I get and that. And that's, you know... I got my loaded right. gun, and mm -hmm. I'm going to be as imperialistic right. and encroaching right. as... Okay. Uh, abstraction of the particular from the universal is the entrance into evil. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, you, that's pulling the thing I want out. And, abstraction, uh, 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 right. Uh, pulling it out right. um, arrogantly. Right. Uh, is and the entrance the into... This would be a, an, Ed, uh, an Edwardsian point of view. Okay. That... Um, I mean, you would find you you can find uh, everything in the particular, but yeah. if you pull something out for mm -hmm. professionalism or l lust of wanting to get it, right? Um, and love is usually it's, a positive it's, thing. It's, it's uh, love is a positive thing, but it's but also love a kind of aggressive, um, possessive, go get it right. and abstract it thing, and that's the beginning of doom, really, in a way. It's it's the New England Calvinist experience. But I mean, this is you know, my Emily Dickinson is early angry work. Right. <laughs> I'm not so angry right. anymore. Okay. I don't think. <laughs> Maybe I am. That's good. But uh, <laughs> but uh, if you read um, the line, the vivid rhetoric of terror. This is from my Emily Dickinson. Early angry work. The, vi if you re the vivid rhetoric of terror was a first step in the slow process toward American democracy, which is, I think, historically accurate, although an extreme statement. And you read it as a post-9-11 citizen where the word terror has a yes, perhaps different connotation, right. but actually quite similar if you think of the, <laughs> the Calvinist army that is essentially what happened. You know, Hope, Hope Atherton's experience was essentially, it's a state militia that's commanded by the Calvinist mm -hmm. leaders. And then Hope has this experience. What Hope Atherton experiences is almost an anti-Bush response to 9-11 experience. Like, that's terror. So when you think about the vivid rhetoric of terror was the first step in the slow process toward American democracy, American democracy is extremely complicated. And I wonder if readers are right to th hear the, this comment about the vivid rhetoric as te of terror as relevant to us today? Um, I, <clears throat> I was very uh, inspired at the time by reading this book um, by Richard Slotkin called The Regeneration of Violence. Right. <clears throat> and um, I don't know if the book is, it's not dated now in a way, but it, it, it is about the uh, the idea of regenerate American literature, literary history, or thought as um, being uh, regenerative, I mean, in violent. Yes. And uh, in reaction to, to violence. And I mean, he takes it up, he takes it up from the earliest work right through, uh, let's say, the 80s, Norman right. Mailer or, some, or war, right. Right, Vietnam. Right. And that there's always this thing. Um, to, uh, de to, to s declare the, the enemy as the other right. and totally terrifying and to be destroyed. And the only possibility of regeneration is to destroy in some way. Right. Um, that's a, a wonderful book. I guess uh, I want to say that there's a, a, a specific, potentially a specific politics in your identification with someone like Hope Atherton, you know, he's an emblem for you, you say twice in your work, um, as Hope is real, Hope Atherton, by watching this violence, realizes how one could be against it, even though implicated by it, as you are, since you say, I'm a North American too. Yeah. Um, that the potential for a dissident 
anti-terror position is the ineffable problem of Hope Atherton, which is to go back to the community and say, I saw the potential of horror and violence that we're capable of, and I gotta tell you, and then no one listens. It's well, traumatic right. to be against right. this. Is this making any sense? Well, yes, so but far more than Hope Atherton, who was just a little fig right. Mary Rowlandson. Mary Rowlandson, right. Uh, she's just a key figure for me. And it, it, I guess my point is simply that it's the potential for the development of a politics of your writing worried about the vivid rhetoric of terror. You know, makes sense? Right, but also attracted to the vivid rhetoric. And attracted to it, exactly. I love a thing and I go after yeah. it. Yeah.